Chapter 2, verse 256 There shall be no compulsion or force in the acceptance of religion. This is pretty direct. The right course has become distinct from the wrong. This final verse is as clear as the sun. Doesn't need any further explanation. No compulsion or force in the acceptance of religion. And regarding whoever leaves Islam, God is giving a huge threat in the Quran. Read this one with me. Chapter 5, verse 54. O you who believed, however, of you should revert from his religion, God will bring forth instead of him people, and he will love them, and they will love him. God didn't say kill them or force them. God said he will guide other people who will love him, and he will love them. Where is the killing part? Then what is the apostasy rule in Islam? In other words, what happens if you leave Islam? The short answer is nothing, absolutely nothing. And the long answer is, it's permissible to kill someone who left Islam and did treason to his country. Someone who left Islam and joined enemy forces, whether physically or by providing secret information to enemies to help them. This is what we call now a spy or an agent to an enemy army in war situation. This particular person should be executed. Unfortunately, some people misunderstood two hadith or quotes from the Prophet Muhammad. The first one, it says, it's forbidden to execute any Muslim except for three reasons. One of them is, whoever left Islam and went against the group. And because this one is not very clear, Prophet Muhammad clarified himself in another hadith. Said the same thing again. He said, it's forbidden to execute any Muslim except for three reasons. One of them is whoever left Islam and started a war against our nation. Hope it's clear now that it's a normal rule that almost every country on earth, including your own country, has it. Hope it's clear now that Quran clearly forbids any kind of force in religion in any way. Hope it's clear now that Quran clearly forbids any kind of terror or aggression towards peaceful nations. These are 22 verses talking about war and peace in 600 plus pages in the Holy Quran. All of these 22 verses can be put in one page. Maybe someday you should also read the other 599 pages talking about how to be a decent human being. And I'm sure you haven't read the apostasy rules in the Bible because the Bible is very clear on how to treat disbelievers. And it doesn't specify if it's war situation or not. I'm talking about a peaceful disbeliever. Check this out. Deuteronomy 13, 6 to 10. If your very own brother or your son or your daughter or the wife you love or your closest friend secretly entices you saying, let us go and worship other gods, do not yield them or listen to them. Show them no pity. Do not spare them or shield them. You must certainly put them to death. Your hand must be the first in putting them to death and then the hands of all the people. Stone them to death because they tried to turn you away from the Lord your God. It is clear here that this person did not rage war against you, is not a violent person. He is peacefully trying to convince you to worship other gods. So he is a genuine disbeliever who is peaceful. What should you do to him? You should kill him with your own hands first and then with the hands of other believers. This is the apostasy rule in the Bible. Can you see any difference? And also in the New Testament. Luke 19, 27. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Another one. Deuteronomy 13, 13 to 16. The troublemakers have risen among you and have led the people of their town astray, saying, let us go and worship other gods. Then you must inquire, probe, and investigate it truly. And if it's true, and it has been proved that this detestable thing has been done among you, you must certainly put to the sword all who have lived in that town. You must destroy it completely, both its people and its livestock. You are to gather all the plunder of the town into the middle of the public square and completely burn the town and all its plunder as a whole burnt offering to the Lord your God. The town is to remain a ruin forever, never to be rebuilt. Now I will give you a task. Research how Christianity spread all over the world. Also research specifically how Christianity spread in South America. And let me know what you find out in the comment section below. Matthew 10, 34. Jesus says, Do not suppose that I've come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. A sword? I thought the Mulgad of Islam came with the sword, not Jesus. 
Matthew 10, 35 For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Doesn't sound so peaceful to me. Numbers 31, 14 to 18 Moses was angry with the officers of his army. Have you allowed all the women to live? He asked them. Now kill all the boys, kill every woman who slept with a man, but say for yourselves every girl who have never slept with a man. According to Jews, this is God ordering Moses to kill women and children and to rape the virgins. And according to Christians, this is Jesus, the God of Moses, ordering Moses to kill the women and children and to rape the virgins. Also in 1 Samuel 15.3, listen now to the message from the Lord. Again, who is the Lord? Jesus is the Lord, right? Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them, put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Again, the God of the Bible, or Jesus, is ordering the death of children and infants. While Muhammad clearly said that even if you are in a defensive war, do not kill older men or women or children or even cut a tree. Huge difference. Revelation 17.14 They will wage war against the lamp, but the lamp will triumph over them, because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. This verse is describing Jesus coming back as a warlord, waging war against everyone who doesn't believe in him. Where is the freedom of religion? At least in Islam, the Quran says there is no compulsion in religion. But here, it's the opposite. 2 Kings 10.17 When Jehu came to Samaria, he killed all who were left there of Ahab's family. He destroyed them, according to the word of the Lord spoken to Elijah. Here again, the Bible God ordered to kill all of Ahab's family. Joshua 13.16 Rip open their pregnant bellies and dash the babies on the ground, and you will be accepted in the kingdom of heaven. Again, I do not know why the Bible God loves killing babies. Book of Ezekiel 9.5-6 As I listened, he said to the others, follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter old men, young men, and maidens, and women, and children. For the fourth time, the Bible God is ordering the killing of women and children. In Deuteronomy 20, 10 to 14, Bible God is ordering to attack the city. If they surrender, take them as slaves. If they don't, kill the men and take the women and children for yourselves. In Jeremiah 48, 10, God curses whoever does not use his sword to shed blood. In Ezekiel 9, 6, God is again ordering the slaughtering of old men, women, and children. In Joshua 6.21, God is ordering the killing of everyone, men and women, young and old, also animals. In Jeremiah 11.22, God will kill men by the sword and children by famine slow death. In Jeremiah 46.10, God's sword is thirsty for blood. In Hosea 13.6, Bible God loves killing babies inside pregnant women's wombs, and of course killing little ones. In Jeremiah 14.12, Bible God will destroy them by the sword. In Exodus 22.20, Bible God orders the killing of anyone who sacrifices to any other God. Where is the freedom of religion? In 2 John 10, God is forbidding you to welcome this believer in your house. In Deuteronomy 20, 16, the Bible God is ordering to kill anything that is alive, doesn't matter warrior or civilian. In Isaiah 13, 15 to 16, Bible God is still ordering the killing of infants. I don't know why the Bible God loves killing the infants that much. In Exodus 22, 24, you will find more killing by the sword. In Ezekiel 11, 8, also more killing by the sword. It's amazing how the media can brainwash a whole population into thinking the innocents are guilty and the guilty are innocent. You can clearly now see with your own eyes the difference between both scriptures. My friend, if you are too lazy to read the original books and you're happy with listening to liars, that's on you. Books are available. You can easily find the truth. 
you have to put a little bit of effort before accusing two billion people of something that is only available in your book accusing them of doing bad stuff that Quran condemns and could only be found in the Bible and a peace offering from us if you decide to spare time to read the Quran we can assign an Arabic speaking person to read it with you over several online calls for free just contact us on Facebook or Discord and we will arrange everything get away from these Muslims Islam spread by the sword 604 pages, 114 chapters, 6,666 verses. Depending on how you count them up, guess what? And many words in Arabic for swords. Say, Muhammad, Hussam, I think 16 words for sword. Guess how many times I found the, any of those words in the Arabic? Zero. Not once. In the Bible, just the word sword over 200 times so when I take my Bible to the preacher and I said excuse me it says here that Jesus said I did not come with peace I came with a sword and it's time to sell your coat and buy a sword what did that mean you know what he said listen to this You'll never believe how people can lie. He said, don't you know this was done in Italy where they transcribed this stuff, the Latin, you know, it was in Italy. Rome is in Italy. Don't you know that? I said, yeah. He said, and they would work by candlelight at night and it was hard to see. Yeah. And while they were trying to translate, you know, put this down in the Latin language, you know what happened? They were eating spaghetti. The Italians, they like spaghetti. And spaghetti fell down and it made a S. It was word. It wasn't sword. It was word. He said, I came with a word. Now, you know what's wrong with that? The word for word in Kone Greek is logos. Now, how did they turn logos into sword? By dropping spaghetti on it. And here, excuse me, but what does it mean, sell your coat and buy a word? What is it, a game show on TV? I'd like to buy that word right there for $100, please. What is this? And the more I talked to them, the more I could see lie after lie after lie. And finally I said, you know what? I don't need to be in a religion full of liars. Thank you